buried a guy yesterday, 49 years old. Oh, my God. Oh. 49 years old. He uh, got baptized on his, on his deathbed. Wow. He could barely speak. His lungs were gone. His breath was gone. But they baptized him on his deathbed there, and then they prayed the sinner's prayer with him. He said, I don't want to be in religion. I want to be a Christian. And so he prayed the sinner's prayer, and every word he, he prayed out clear as a bell. Awesome. Jesus saved him yes. on his deathbed right there at 49. Was it worth it? All of those people in the audience, a lot of them didn't know Jesus. A lot of them didn't have any idea. And what Jim had taught them was some about God, but he taught them other things, his own ways and things like that. Myself, I want to leave a legacy that says I didn't get my act together on my deathbed. You know? Yeah. I don't know what your legacy is. I don't know what your desires are. But my desire is to please the Lord. My desire is to have enough power in my life to forsake my sin and live a holy life. So the power of God comes through me in power and truth rather than just just hanging out here and pretending I'm a Christian. <laughs> yeah. You know, you can actually pretend that. Didn't really know that. We're going to go to 1 Peter today first. 1 Peter first. 1 Peter 1. All right. We're going to talk about the genuineness of our faith. Amen. The genuineness of our faith. The genuineness of our faith is, is uh, it comes through um, trial. Yeah, but, yeah, fix my call, right? Yeah, Regina did that earlier. Thank you, I appreciate it. Look at sharp, man. Do I have quarters in my nose? <laughs> here, come here. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> yeah, it is bad. Okay. Did you say no chapter? One. Oh, the first chapter of 1 Peter. So, Father, we thank you for your word. Yes. Especially for your word, Lord. Yes. We are honored that you would give us your word. We are honored that you send Jesus to us to interpret your word. We're thankful, God, that you haven't given up on us yet. In Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. Amen. I'm going to read out of the Amplified Bible because... Uh, because I'm going to read out of the Amplified Bible. Because <laughs> <laughs> you want <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. okay. When we get to the word obedience, that word obedience is to, to, um, is to hear under. In other words, it's to listen with submission, assent, and agreement to the Word of God. With submission, assent, and agreement to the Word of God. So when we come into obedience to God, it means we come with, I agree with you, Lord, yes, I assent yes. to what you're saying, mm -hmm. and I come in submission to what it is. Yes. Okay, that's what obedience is. And I want you to know it's probably needed. Go figure that. All right. So, Peter, an apostle, a special messenger of Jesus Christ, writing to the elect exiles, of the dispersion scattered or sowed abroad in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. Now I want you to know that uh, just as the Jews were scattered in the old days, so the church was scattered in the first century. And this kind of goes, uh, it, it kind of alludes back to that time, okay, to the dispersion. So in them days, the apostles were hanging out in Jerusalem. The Lord had told them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. At that point in time, the apostles were hanging out in Jerusalem. They hadn't gone anywhere. Yes. So, right. what the Lord did, okay, he's the devil maybe. Anyway, persecution came upon the apostles in Jerusalem, so they had to scatter. Okay? So, if, if you won't do what God tells you to do, he might make it impossible to stay where you're at. If you won't go, you'll make it impossible to stay where you're at. So if I was you, I'd go ahead and obey God and what he's saying to you so he doesn't have to disperse you among the brethren. Amen. Dis disperse you among the nations. Hallelujah. So, it says here, these were chosen, oh, who were chosen and foreknown by God the Father and consecrated, sanctified, made holy by the Holy Spirit, to be obedient to Jesus Christ, 
the Messiah and to be sprinkled with his blood and may grace and spiritual blessings and peace be given to you in an increasing abundance that spiritual peace to be realized in and through Jesus Christ, freedom from fears, agitating passions, and moral conflicts. That's a long sentence. <laughs> Number two in the uh, New King James says this. I'll turn over there. Since I'm not there yet. It says, verse two says, um, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father in sanctification of spirit for obedience and the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace and peace be multiplied to you. Ooh, hallelujah. All that to say that. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Grace and peace be multiplied to you. Listen to this. Spiritual peace be realized in and through Christ. Freedom from fears, agitating passions, and moral conflict. He's praying for them that their agitating passions don't get the best of them. I don't know about you, but I have a couple agitating passions that bother me at that. <laughs> All right? And I don't like it. So here, Peter is praying for these people that they'd be delivered from that sort of stuff. Now watch this. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. In the Amplified it says, Praise, honor, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah. By his boundless mercy, we have been born again to an ever-living hope through the resurrection of our Lord from the dead. I like that. Mm -hmm. We have been born again. So he says, when you have been begotten, that means you have been born again. Because begotten means born. Just thought I'd throw that in. Yes. All right. It's important to know these things. Yeah. Um, and then it says, I like this part, and I'm going to read it in both also. It says, who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed at the last time. Now watch this. We are kept means born anew into an inheritance which is beyond the reach of change and decay, imperishable, unsullied, and unfading, reserved for you in heaven. That's four. Excuse me. By his boundless mercy, you have been born again to an ever-living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Hallelujah. Now we're going to get to the really cool part. It says, In this you greatly rejoice, though for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials. Now you jump back up there. You are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation ready to be revealed at the last time, right? In this you greatly rejoice. Now he's not saying we're rejoicing in the trials, but we should. But he says you're rejoicing because you're kept by the power of God for salvation at the last time. That is a pretty good deal. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. We not only get salvation here, we get salvation there. Now watch this. In this you greatly rejoice, yet for a little while, if need be, you are grieved by various trials. What would the need be to be grieved by various trials. Back <laughs> An honest man. Amen. If you've been goofing off and you've been doing other things than the road to salvation, if need be, you might have to get in a couple of trials. Now, trials are not meant to be easy. Otherwise, they would not be called trials. Okay? Temptations are difficult to resist or they wouldn't be temptations. Right. Endurance wouldn't be a theme in the Bible if it wasn't necessary. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. So endurance is a big theme in the Bible, especially in 1 Peter here. It says you have a need of endurance. After you have done the will of God, you'll inherit the promise. So trials, when they come, are not easy. You ever fasted and prayed? Tried. Good, good for you. There's another honest woman. Okay. Fasting isn't easy. It wasn't meant to be easy. It wasn't meant to be delightful. Now, if you take delight in it, God bless you. Let, let me have a little of that. I don't like to fast because I get really thinking hungry and I get mean and, and nasty and kind of grouchy and, and something like that. This fasting is not the thing. He's angry. Hangry. That's right. 
You get that thing in you. But it wasn't meant to be enjoyable. It was meant to humble myself before the Lord to discipline this old body and make this old body do what I tell it rather than what it wants to do. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes mm -hmm. when my body is doing what it wants to do and yes. I can't overcome it, I fast and pray and make that sucker do what I want it to do. Amen. You're not eating today. I don't care if I get grouchy. I don't care if it's hard. I don't care if I get hangry. I'm not going to eat today. <laughs> Angry. That's what Wes called that. <laughs> yeah. I see that word somewhere. Okay. Because, you know, when you're at work and you're know, around noon, everybody's coming. You go sit down and eat lunch, everybody's happy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's right. So, so it's not meant to be some, somewhat, it's supposed to be a trial. Now, watch this. Let's do the why. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials, distressed by various trials. Why? That the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to the praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. He's thinking ahead to the revelation of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. You are going through trials now. Yeah. So right. at the revelation of Jesus Christ, there will be praise, honor, and glory. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. So when we're going through these trials, we can rejoice in them, because James says in all kinds of places, said, in this world you will have tribulations. Right. Be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Yes. You're going through these things for a reason. Uh -huh. And it could be for someone else. And it probably is for someone else. Amen. And it's trying to get us to the genuineness of faith. I find myself sometimes, my faith isn't very genuine because I'm not going through the trials as I ought to go through them. You know, after a test, if you pass the test, you don't have to take the test again. Amen. The only reason that you'd have to have the test again is if you fail the test the first time. You guys remember school, don't you? Mm. <laughs> well, you're basically in a school right now, and the testing of your faith is so precious it's just ridiculously precious because your faith is the thing that takes you into the glory. Yes. Hallelujah. So, now, watch this. The genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold and perishes, though it is tested by fire. Come be the fire inside of me. That's a tough song to sing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because that fire is the thing that purges out the old and lets the new come. Okay. Whom, having not seen, you love. Though now you do not see him, yet believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Yes. Receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. So we have two things here, the now and the then. The now is, having not seen him, you love. Though now you do not see him, yet believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Inexpressible joy. You have inexpressible joy in the one you believe in, though you can't see him. That's now. Re receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. That's then. So we have two things in mind. The end is glory. The now is joy unspeakable and full of glory. These are pretty good things. Joy. You know, you choose to be joyful or not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is a choice every day. It is a choice all day long, in fact. I could go home in a little while and being hangry, I could, <laughs> you know, uh, Lana has reminded me that we used to fast every January. Yeah, so what Regina and I have done is we started the Daniel fast January 1st, we're going to go through January the end. 30 days has to remember April, June, and November. Uh, 31 days. So 31 days we do this Daniel Rez, right? No sweets, no meats. Uh, pulse. In fact, I went I went one day without eating anything. I did not feel good. I was not happy. It was difficult for me. Yeah. It was supposed to be difficult for me, for crying out loud. Why, uh, what? If it was easy, everybody would be doing it. Oh, yeah. That's true. If holiness was easy, everybody would be walking around laying hands on the sick and raising them from the dead. I want you to know, power, you like power? 
Me, I like power. Power is got only through holiness, and holiness is received only through humility. Depending on the grace of God. You can't get holiness without being humble. Yes. Because God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. So if you want holiness, you need to be humble enough to receive it. You can't be looking down your self-righteous nose with some other guy thinking, well, I'm holier than he is. <laughs> right? Right. Humility comes when you see somebody and begin to criticize them, or anybody can judge, right? Yes. But can you save? Anybody can judge, can you save? Okay, are you willing to fast and pray till they come around and be thinking right? Till they're whole in their thoughts and in their lives. Are you willing to give your life a ransom for them even though you don't like the sight of them? Oh, yeah, come on. God give me this person. I'm thinking, oh, I know a couple of those. Yeah. Yeah, so some people can't stand. Are you willing? Are you going to criticize them? Or are you going to pray for them? Are you going to give your life for them? Do they know you love them? If they don't know you love them, don't criticize them. You haven't got the right. That's right. Until you're willing to die for them, until you're committed to die for them, you haven't got the right to criticize them. That's right. Woo! That's some pretty good stuff there. That's some pretty good stuff. Praise the Lord. So we get sanctified by the Spirit. He said, the salvation of your souls at the end. Now watch this in 10th verse. It says, of this salvation the prophets have inquired and searched carefully who prophesied of the grace that would come to you, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ who was in them was indicating when he testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glories to follow. Mm -hmm. To them it was revealed that not to themselves but to us they were ministering the things which now have been reported to you through those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven things which angels desire to look into. Yes. So we, here we have two groups of, groups of people, beings. One is the prophets, the other is the angels. Now I want you to know angels know some stuff. Mm -hmm. But they want to check into what we got. The prophets, who are prophetic, Right? They weren't, they weren't uh, depending on the prophetic ability to hear from God. They were studying to find out what in what time these things were supposed to have. They were delving into the Word of God. David goes on and on and on. In uh, Psalm 119, mm -hmm. oh my, mm -hmm. this, this is so good. Psalm 119, it's a really long chapter, but I'll just give you a few verses. In Psalm 119, 11, it says, 119.11, says, Your word I have hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Mm -hmm. How do you get holy? You find out what it is. Yes. Praise the Lord, yes. thy word. Mm -hmm. And then in uh, Psalm 119.24, it says, Your testimonies also are my delight and my counselors. Mm -hmm. well, let's keep going. In the 97th verse through the 100th verse, it says, Oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation all the day. You, through your commandments, make me wiser than my enemies, for they are ever with me. Now watch this. I have more understanding than all of my teachers, for your testimonies are my meditation, because I understand more than the ancients, because I keep your precepts. The ancients are the old guys who know everything. Mm -hmm. Okay, we become wiser than our teachers. How did David do this stuff? He constantly was in the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Constantly going over the precepts of the kingdom. Constantly doing that. Now, if he is in the Old Testament, how much more we, who are called out by God, just like Israel was called out. Mm -hmm. In fact, in, in Isaiah 51, I'll show you how they were called out. It says... Uh, um, in Isaiah 51.1, it says, Listen to me, you who follow after righteousness, who seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you are hewn and the hole from, of the pit from which you are dug. Look to Abraham your father and to Sarah who bore you. For I called him alone and blessed him and increased him. Why did God bless and increase Abraham? 
because he believed God. He simply believed what God said to him. That was it. That's why he blessed him. He was counted unto him for righteousness just for that act. And then he tested him a little while later with his son, mm -hmm. the son whom he promised him. And he knew that God would raise him from the dead if he cut his throat. Yes. Mm -hmm. was a promise. Wasn't, wasn't concerned about it. Wasn't upset about it. He took his kid out there, got out the knife, was about to do it. And the Lord says, hold it. Everything's groovy. Just want to see if you would. God's done that to me a number of times. Took me out somewhere just just find out if I would. He caught. I was on my way. I've told this story before. I was on my way under the underpass out there, going out to Terribles. And there's two guys there. And the Lord told me, spoke to me right out. He says, "If you pick those two guys up, they're gonna they're gonna beat you half to death." So I drove past them two guys. <laughs> and the Lord spoke to me again. He says, "Why don't you go pick those guys up and give them a place to stay tonight?" Oh. Uh, that can't be God. <laughs> he just told me they're going to beat me up, you know. <laughs> so, just because God gives you something prophetic doesn't mean it's predestined to happen. That's good. That is good. So, what I did was went back and picked them up and brought them home. I thought, okay, if you want me to die, cool. Early graduation, I'm good. So, I come home. I didn't even worry about it. I just went to bed and went to sleep. I thought they'd come in there to the pipe wrench and just kill, kill me, you know. Nothing happened. Big thanks in the morning. Every time I sent them on their way, I said, they coming back later to kill me? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. They said, no, I just wanted to know if you'd do it. Just wanted to know if you'd do it, if I told you that. Just like Paul. He says, I, you're going to have trouble every town you go to. There's going to be persecution. They're going to beat you up. They're going to stone you. Yeah. Do all this stuff to you. I'll show you how many things you've got to suffer for my name's sake. Mm -hmm. What a promise. Oh, right. Thanks, God. I really appreciate it. <laughs> right. yeah. see, see, God gives us grace. This is the grace He gives. He gives us grace. He brings us into His kingdom. Presents us to His Father. Gives us access to the throne of God. That's what the grace of God has done. Then He says, okay, now you need to obey me. You mean I have to obey God after I get saved? <laughs> he saves you so that you can obey God. Amen. Do we need to obey? Of course we do. Why? Because He saved us, given us access to the Father. Who? What? Are you kidding? You think you got a better plan than Him? Yeah. If you haven't got a better plan than Him, just go ahead and do what He says. Your life will be blessed. You've had days when everything just went right. Yes. Sir. Everything went right. You're walking in the Spirit. Obedience is there. Blessing of God. Blessing of God. Leading of the Lord. Leading of the Lord. You know? You fall into things. You go along your day. Everything's great. The next day, you're a jerk. Low down, <laughs> dirty rock. You can't get your act together. Wonder why it isn't coming. Well, you didn't seek the Lord that morning. The morning before, you did. Regina says, yes. you're a lot better preacher when you come over here and pray during the week. <laughs> of course. Yes. If I don't come over and pray during the week, pray for you, pray for you, pray for you, etc. And pray for what's going to go on. Things go a little better. If I don't, I come over here Sunday morning trying to pick up music. <laughs> oh my God. That's what I'm. Matt comes in. Oh, I'll be done in a minute, Matt. You know, it's because I'm telling you and this certain, you know, I just studied a little bit of this. Uh, I mean, God gives grace. God gives grace. And even if you don't obey God, you'll probably get in. You'll probably get into glory. But if, what do we want? Because of His goodness. Do we want to wait till the last day? What kind of legacy are we leaving? Is the Lord going to say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Or is He going to say, Dude. <laughs> You're waiting. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, by the... He says, some are saved by fire. Barely burning in. Others are saved, you know, different. So what, what, is, what, what do you want? It's kind of up to us. Yes. But I've blown it so much in my life, and now I'm 70 years old. I love a knock off the BS. You know God. God is bigger than that. Yes. 
God has, has a bigger heart than that, a bigger Amen. mind than that. Amen. He knows how to redeem everything from the past and bring you to a place of purpose now and give you a place with the glorious ones. Yes. Hallelujah. He just can and he will. But trying to act in faith without living a life in correspondence with it is really difficult. You ever tried to speak a word of faith? You know, half an hour, half an hour before, he was off uh, uh, viewing pornography and, and doing your own thing, you know? And now you're going to come in and speak, speak a prayer of faith over somebody? That just doesn't really happen. There's no power in that. There's no prayer of faith there. Why? Because you know you aren't functioning in faith. You know you're not doing what pleases the Lord. You know, God did stuff for people just because they pleased them. Look at Enoch for crying out loud. Took him to heaven. Why? Yeah. Because he pleased them. Mm -hmm. Oh, you mean you can please him? Can you do things that please the Lord? Absolutely. Can you do things that displease the Lord? Yes. Sure. Okay. We well, just our choice. It's our choice to pick which one we're going to do. And if we do please him all the time, we know that he will answer every prayer we pray. When you're in a place, you know there's no known sin in your life, you're walking the walk, you can speak the word of faith with confidence knowing that God's going to answer your prayer. Yes. That is a very cool place to be. It's the best place to be. I, I, just, I just love that place. Sometimes I'm there, sometimes I'm not. Ah. In Isaiah 51, I was going to read a little more back there, just for a second. Isaiah 51, we read, um, oh, this is good. This is good. Okay, Isaiah 51, 6 and 7, it says, uh, Lift up your eyes to the heavens and look to the earth beneath. For the heavens will vanish away like a smoke, the earth will grow old like a garment, and those who dwell in it will die in like manner. So much for... No, I'm not going to say it. Mm -hmm. But my salvation will be forever, and my righteousness will not be abolished. Listen to me. You who know righteousness, you people in whose heart is my law, do not fear the reproach of men, nor be afraid of their insults. God was saying prophetically that in these coming days, if you're looking at the leaders and how terrible they're doing, you'll get confused in your head and forget about Jesus. You get so into all oh, this, uh, pretty soon you just hate those guys because they're screwing up so bad. And they are screwing up so bad. And what you need to do is discern the thing they're doing wrong, but without getting angry at them, without getting resentful and bitter at them, and pray for them and find out what God wants you to do about it. Because in Nazi Germany, I want you to know, those people liked Hitler. Yes. <coughs> They liked him. Why? Because he was bringing a country together. Yeah. Lo and behold, look what happened. Mm -hmm. You know, and then East and West Germany. Oh my God, the, those people, they were people, you know why they built the wall? They said, you're building that so you can't come over here. And, no, no, they built the wall so those people couldn't escape out of East Germany into West Germany because West Germany was prospering because it was under the government of a godly, uh, a, a godly government. And over here, they're still back in the liberalism and all the, uh, you give us your farms and we'll do a community thing and, yeah. and everybody will own everything. Those farmers, they knew what was going on. They tried to get over to West Germany where they could have their own dang farm and do the right thing at the right, see? So they built that wall so they couldn't escape. And they did it through propaganda. They did it through subjugation. Mm -hmm. And that, there are so many parallels here. Mm -hmm. There are so many parallels. A friend of mine from China, I told you this before, she lives in China. She saw how communism overtook. It was through propaganda. Yes. Right. They exactly. fed the people propaganda long enough so they went for it. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden it went, yeah. Gotcha. yeah. Now they're ruled. Yeah. Oh, just, a, it just, anyway, that's how it happens to propaganda. But they will not try it. I want no. you to know there's revival coming and is in this nation right now where Christians are standing up and pushing back Amen. the lies and the lies are being exposed. And the, But when you start walking in the kingdom, when you start walking in the righteousness of Christ, don't expect them to like you. No. Right. You remember Peter? 
The guy who wrote this book was walking along in his shadow, was healing people? Yes. Dude, that's anointing. He was walking in the anointing, you know? He was walking in holiness and godliness and that, and that spirit, bam, 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 and they're getting healed. A couple months later, they crucified him upside down. Every one of the disciples who walked in the spirit in the power of God got killed except for John. They boiled him in oil and didn't take. They boiled him in oil, didn't burn him. Boiled him in oil. And it, you ever burn yourself in oil? Ah! Yes. Don't you, man? Bubble, 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 bubble. Uh -huh. <laughs> I don't know. It didn't hurt him. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yeah. So anyway. So anyway, every one of those guys, but because they walked in righteousness, persecution came. And that's why I've been teaching. I believe that revival is here. Amen. And I believe yes. that we're coming into this place where we're walking in holiness and the power of God. And as that begins to reveal itself, there's nothing wrong with the gospel. No. Right, right, right. Don't be ashamed to word it out when you tell somebody the gospel they don't like it. Don't get goofed up. You see what happens to the leaders that don't come along with God. They get fried, man. Yeah. In Isaiah, Isaiah 51, go read it. But so here we are walking in the gospel. And the the Lord is teaching us in 1 Peter, endurance is the name of the game. Mm -hmm. You're going to be persecuted, but you're going to have power. Right. You're going to have power, but you're going to be persecuted. Mm -hmm. Righteousness will stand up. Uh, evil will be pushed back. One soul at a time, as you get people saved, the power of God will be released more and more and more. Mm -hmm. But you still need to stand. Amen. Mm -hmm. I don't like being cold. I think all the time of being out, being chased, and not having a jacket on. Mm -hmm. And couldn't get it, you know, and they're chasing me, and I'm, and I'm hungry. Another one, I'm hungry, they're chasing me, I don't have a coat on. You know, I, one of my shoes is coming loose, my foot's cold, and I just, I just, I don't know what that is, kind of a thing that goes on in my head. That, <laughs> that's what Paul went through. They whooped him. 39 lashes five times. Four times they beat him with rods. Three times he was shipwrecked. Once he was all night and all day in the ocean treading water. That's cold too. Yes. <laughs> right? The man isn't that warm all the time. Anyway, I think about those things and I'm ashamed of myself at times. Because my coffee is not hot enough, <laughs> and I didn't get my second cup of tea. Yeah. Right? I get ashamed of myself. I say, Lord, these guys went through that right. stuff, and I'm pushed out of shape for this. Forgive me, Lord. Yeah. Yes. Forgive Amen. me, Lord. Amen. Help me to do the right yes. thing. Amen. Oh, man. Uh, Psalm 119, 11, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. What did they study? What, what is it that they, they looked into, these prophets? And these angels, they looked into the word of God. It says, your word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Okay? Uh, in Psalm 119, 24, it says, uh, your law is my delight and my counselor. I read that? Yeah. Okay. Okay, then that's enough of that stuff. So, um, uh, yeah, praise the Lord. Okay. Let's do just a short little Bible study, and then we're going to go to Ephesians. You guys got a couple minutes? Mm -hmm. Okay. Somebody look up, um, let's all look up 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians, we'll start there in the third chapter. Would somebody look up James 1 for me? Got it. Okay, you got that. We'll go to 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 3. Would you read James 1, 2 through 4? I will. Okay. My brethren, count it all joy. When you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience, but let patience have perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Ooh. Read six. Okay. But let him ask in faith, oh, nothing wavering. Yeah. For he that wavers is like a wave of the sea. Driven with the wind and tossed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How about verse 12? Verse 12. Got it. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tired, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to them that love him. 
when he is tried, he will receive the crown of life. Mm -hmm. So blessed, 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 blessed are you. Okay, so in first, 2 Corinthians 3, in the 18th verse it says, But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory by the Spirit of God. In the fourth, ver fourth chapter, in the sixth verse it says, For it is God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the power of God may be, oh, oh, that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. Now watch this. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying about in our bodies the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our body. You want the life of Jesus manifested in your body? Yes. Go through the trials. Mm -hmm. And then the life of Jesus. Now look what it says. We have this treasure in earthen vessels that's the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. And then he says we are hard pressed on every side. So we have the treasure of the Holy Spirit, the power of God in us, but we're hard-pressed on every side. Why? So the glory of God might really be revealed. Yeah. That the life of Christ might be shown to people. God showed me a little time, a while ago, as I was praying, I told you this last week, I believe. He said, go show them who I am. Go show them who I am. And I thought, all right. So all that day, I was chomping at the bit. <laughs> right? I wanted to show them who Jesus was. I only got two chances that whole day. It was tough, man. Because like, I was ready. You know? But that isn't a one-time deal. Right. That was a one-time deal. Go show them who I am. So for me to be able to show them who Christ is in the way I want to show them, my life is going to have to change. Right. I'm going to have to lay aside every weight. And that sin that so easily be set me. And run with patience the race set before me. Hallelujah. And do the things that he's calling me to do so that holiness and power are mine. Woo! I'm just so excited. Because if God commands you to go show them who he is, then God wants to show his power through you. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's just the way it is. So I'm, I'm expecting things. I'm not functioning by presumption. Don't get me wrong. I go ahead and be led by the Holy Spirit. But when I have a chance, there's nothing wrong with the gospel. There might be something wrong with me that day, but there's nothing wrong with the gospel. There's nothing wrong with telling somebody about Jesus. No matter what, there just is not nothing wrong with it. You're not giving them a platitude. You're not trying to just appease them. You're giving them life. There's nothing wrong. God got, Regina got this word. It's just the other day. There's nothing wrong with the gospel. What are we sneaking around for? Who are we trying to please? Shrugging off sin, apologizing like we're spreading some kind of disease. I'm saying no way. No way. Sometimes I get that in my head somewhere. The enemy starts speaking to me and th thinking I'm, I'm, pushing, I'm pushing Jesus on people. Why not? <laughs> Pushing, yeah, let me, let me push you into eternal life. Yeah. Is that bad for you? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he doesn't call us to be jerks or anything like that, but he right. does call us to be love. love. And love is pushy. Yes. That's right. Jesus showed up to funeral. He didn't come up to the lady and say, Oh, you poor thing, I'm so sorry for your son. He's in the coffin, that's tough. He come in and wrecked every funeral he showed up at. He says, uh, son, your mama needs to get up. <laughs> right? Yes. What's he say right off? Give him something to eat. Yeah. Every time. I love that part, man. Give him something to eat. He'll <laughs> be hungry. He's been dead most of the day. <laughs> uh, praise the Lord. All right. Praise the Lord. So, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. show grace. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Okay, that's good. I did all that. Fine, Paul. Okay, we don't. Praise the Lord. So, 
There you go. I just want you to know revival is here. Amen. Oh. Amen. Yes. Amen. Revival is here. All you have to do is step into what God is doing. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. Just allow yourself to be changed and let God do the work. Amen. Mm -hmm. And if you've blown it for your whole life, it's okay. Well, maybe now. Yeah. yeah. It's always good to start. Right. God showed you that this morning. Blank page. But I've tried that before. You erase that one. Okay? Burn that one. New page today. Yes. New page today. So Lord, we start our lives today. We have a new page today. So Lord, you are the God of the second, second, second chance. Yes. And so Lord, we receive that second chance today. Help us to walk in this, this thing called holiness you're brought us to and in power and humility. We love you, God. We honor you today in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. So, Pastor, can I tell something? Hang it's on. a testimony. Hang so, on. Um, hang on. Hang on. Oh. Lord, thank you for letting us give today. We praise you for it. We love you. You are a great king. Amen. 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 Good. So I bought, 20 years ago, I bought an artificial tree, and it has um, fiber optics, and you plug it in, it has a little motor about this big, it's encased in steel. I've had that tree for 20 years, and I kept saying, I'm going to get rid of it, it's getting old, and it's like an electric kaleidoscope, so oh, wow. all the fibers are different colors. Well, I've had this tree forever. So I went to take it apart after Christmas, and the tubes that you put into the kaleidoscope type thing, they just pop in and they pop out, and then all the branches lay down. Cool. So um, I went to take it apart, and it, the, the tubes wouldn't come out. And so I took something to try and tap them out. No, they were stuck in there for good. I couldn't move them. I tried all of them. They would not move, and I thought, well, I'm going to have Brian take it apart. So I laid it down to see why, and the whole thing was completely melted. Ooh, wow. So it could have and should have caught fire. Wow. So I showed it to Ryan, and he said, Grandma, wow. you have got angels around this house because that wow. should have caught fire. It was completely melted. Wow. Everything was so melted, it was fused together. Oh, my God. Wow. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Yeah. Yeah. That's, Lord. that's cool. That was God. So God. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. You know, that happened to me when I changed my stove. My pot belly stove I had sitting on the ground. I cut the legs off it so I could get it in my fireplace and let the chimney go. Okay. When I moved it finally, it was charred down on the underneath the rock. Oh my god. That gosh. far on the wood. It almost oh. threw the whole floor. Oh oh. Same thing. Oh, Same wow. thing. Should have burnt the house down. Yeah. God is good. Yes. 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 Hallelujah. Yes. <laughs> he does. Yes. 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 He does. You don't even know it. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. So. I left that tree running when I was gone all day and oh, wow. <laughs> yeah.